to hi. Hi. Yeah, I'm telling them that you like to chew on the tacky tree and it's not good for you. You want to say hello? No, I don't. <laughs> hi. Hi. I'm Peggy. I really want to be put down. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. Bye bye. Your cats do not like the, the being held thing. They don't. Grady. And what's funny is like, she, um, like she loves to cuddle. Like if you sit somewhere where she can curl up next to you, she loves it. But they neither of them likes being held at all. Grady just, I pick him up. He's like, okay, I'll deal with this. Doesn't stop this guy. He just picks him up and well, speaking of, him around and Dottie just glares at him with her little ears flattened out. Hold on one second. Speaking of, hey, buddy. Hey. Hey, buddy. What? No, come yes. back. Peggy is a kitty now. Back here. Here, Peggy. You want some treats? Because I because I was mean and picked you up. He keeps coming in and yelling at me. Here you go. You can have some bacon. Wandering pieces. off as soon as I get within range of picking him up. Well, he's got he's a big like, heart. I want attention. No, I don't want attention. I want attention. No, <laughs> I, I want don't attention, want attention. But I want you to prove it. I can't hear you. Hold on. Uh, what'd you say? He's like, I want attention, but I want you to work for it. <laughs> Uh, see, Grady, Grady is perfectly cool. Up again. Just come up and eat the treats, baby. No, you don't trust me? All right. There you go. Have a treat. What's funny is you pick Peggy up and, like, Dottie will put up with it for a minute. She'll just flatten her ears and glare at you. Peggy will start to wiggle, but, like, then she starts to make this exasperated little, like, sound. Like, she starts, like, grunting and breathing really heavy, like, and that's when you know she's getting really mad and you got to put her down. And then I've got this. And you have, yeah, you could wear him. Have you seen the kitten at the shelter that looks like him? Yes. He's not long haired like Grady, but other than that, he looks a lot like him. He's a crazy little guy. I love him. He has seizures. So he's gotten returned a couple times. He gets adopted and then returned because he's really cute, but then he has seizures and people can't handle it. <laughs> Are you done, pal? Are you? Baby, sit up here and eat the treat. I won't grab you. Grady, can you can you not? I could, but I don't want to not. He's purring, just happy as can be, slapping me with his tail. <laughs> Buddy. Buddy. <laughs> and the funny thing is, like... That's the only thing in the shot, is his butt and his tail just smacking you in the face. Yep. Buddy. Seriously. Thank you. When cats stick their butt in your face, that's a con that's a, like a nice greeting. You keep telling you, your li that's I think that's a lie. No, because they sniff each other's butts uh -huh. as like a greeting to like identify each other. So that's why they, they want you to. So because uh -huh. I'm a really weird cat mom whenever they stick their butts in my face i always say like oh that's a nice clean butt and i scratch it because i don't want them to have low self-esteem so anyway let's get the intro rolling and you just need the truth it's okay each week radio dead air audience goes out Catherine, the radio data audience, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little something we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And Tara, this week, you thought we'd seen everything. Oh of all, all the years of doing this, we thought we'd seen pretty much We've seen a lot. We thought we had everything in a nice, neat little, little, little little boxes, little... We thought we understood the world. Tara? Someone... We thought we understood what it is to be a Jedi. Someone <laughs> this week... Well, not this week, but somebody invented a whole new crime. That's amazing. I'm excited. Are you... Re do, do you want to be excited about this, though? Yes. Come on, we've been doing this for a lot of years. You gotta, you gotta keep it fresh. Surgeon who etched his initials in patient's liver 
was convicted of assault. London, a prominent British surgeon who etched his initials into the livers of two patients in a case that shocked many with its audacity, has been convicted of assault. The surgeon, Simon Brammel, was uh, gained fame in 2010 after su successfully transplanting a plane crash victim's liver into a patient pled guilty in Birmingham on two counts of assault by beating. And the reason they charged him with assault by beating was they had no statute that this technically right. fell under. Because what the fuck is that? What he did was he took an argon laser while he was in the midst of surgery with people and initialed people's livers while they were sign your work now in the in, in the long run it's essentially harmless they're, they they aren't going to be hurt by this it will wear off however you fucking you you gra I messed up you graffitied someone's insides i kind of wonder if this happens a lot and we just don't know because how would you know if no one opens you up again well you better hope you don't fuck up the first time like if you don't get another surgery how the fuck is anybody gonna know well that, so that i kind of wonder that's what if happens. This happens more than we know in this case there was a follow-up surgery and a couple other surgeons opened this guy up and can you imagine they're like what the Somebody's what? fucking initials. There's someone's they, fucking initials in here. It's your initials, and you're on record as having done the surgery, so it's not going to be a long walk to catching you. I know, right? Like they're not going to need Sherlock Holmes on this motherfucker. I just it. I, uh... I mean, I guess you could argue that doctors think that what they do is an art, and artists like to sign their work. But no, yeah. when your work is someone else's body, no, you don't get to do that. No, no, it's not. You did. Uh, I did great work today. No, As, and I love they had to uh, to convict him with assault by beating because nobody it's, done this. What the fuck? Like, yeah, this was not even something the law had to consider. Nobody had to say, "Hold on a second, guys." What if when a doctor is, is doing surgery, he, like, inscribes someone's organs? What the fuck are you talking about, Frank? No, just hear me <laughs> out. Frank. We need a law for that. I recall years and years ago seeing some woman on Oprah who, like, she was in the middle of a really bad divorce and her soon-to-be ex-husband walked in on a surgery she was having and sewed her vagina shut or something. It's not really related. It just came to mind. Because once you're knocked out, like, you're kind of at their mercy. Like, what if your surgeon's really fucked up? Like, you don't know what they're doing. Even when I had just had a guy cut a hole in my leg, like they numbed me up and I laid back. I didn't know what he was doing down there. Have you checked for initials? Yeah. Have, have. Oh, all right. Next up, this is good. Oh. I mean, not on the inside. Maybe he put some initials on the inside. Huh? If he did, who fucking cares, man? The, this, this is. A... I understand that the internet has changed porn forever okay that it it has all like where this is going of course you do it's altered the vista of pornography and people are like have you seen like this, this reality porn shit what do you mean well the, it's not really real it's like they fake like real life incidents to try to make like they're kind of like doing a Blair Witch thing with porn oh like oh my god I caught my stepsister with my boyfriend or whatever well no it's like they like pick up people off the street oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. so I, I understand this stuff is however 
there are there are some lines that we don't cross and uh you don't really pick up people off the street no and uh you also don't try to make your porn in jail huh attorney visited jail to make porn with inmates and what? yeah that is a full service attorney <laughs> it's clear water florida Deputies in Pinellas County say an attorney was caught with his pants down while planning to record himself having sex with an inmate as part of a project to make a video called Girls in Jail. According to the sheriff's office, detectives received a tip last month that Andrew Spark was paying female inmates for sexual acts at Pinellas County Jail in Clearwater. Um, they later confirmed that Spark met privately with 28-year-old inmate Antoinette Napolitana, uh, Napolitana yeah, uh, that same day, after investigating, deputies said the two had actually had sex inside the Pinellas County Jail at least six times between June 2017 and December 2017. And do you know why it was six times? Because they had to put out monthly updates. Oh. I'm not... <laughs> I say this as somebody who makes videos for YouTube. You gotta keep your you gotta keep your subscribers updated. You gotta keep putting out new content, or you lose them. I didn't think you got that much privacy in prison. <laughs> like even with your attorney, I kind of thought someone was always watching you. Yeah, it's a hell of an angle, isn't it? Yeah. Attorney-client privilege. Well, not like that. No. I mean, here's the thing about this guy, though. Like, these women are in prison. Yeah. They're not getting any. You're paying them. You could make that billable hours, you fucking idiot. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Uh, I just... it. Oh, how the fuck could you think this was a fucking good idea? There's like, this. Someone's gonna recognize somebody. Th there's this weird mentality about the internet that because we're doing shit online and we're doing it ourselves and we're filming everything, that there are no boundaries and we can just do whatever the fuck we want. Here to the tell you, is, the internet is forever. Yeah, it's forever, and the law still applies to shit you do. Just because you're putting it on the internet doesn't mean. It's like, you can walk into court and like, well, what, what, how do you plead? Not guilty by reason of internet bullshit, your honor. Right. <clears throat> like, as anybody who's been slapped with a stalking charge for sending someone death threats on the internet will tell you, just because it's on the internet doesn't make it not real. Yeah, were people doing that shit when they were sending death threats by the mail? No, no, it's not real. I just mailed the I letter. mailed it. It's not it's, like I showed up there. Right, right. Jesus Christ. And the internet is forever. It, it is. never goes away. No, it does not. It does not. Okay, and of course we have this one just in time for Christmas. And of course we have this headline. <laughs> because they couldn't resist. We're back in familiar territory for us here, guys. Ho, ho, no! Burglar gets stuck in chimney. I can't believe we haven't seen that headline before. And, oh, look, look, look at the picture of Look at him. Look at they him. Have emoji reactions to this story. Yeah, I know. It's it's from and it's an NBC affiliate, no less. They have emoji reactions. Is that where we're at with our news now? Yes, it is. Your local news outlet asks you to click an emoji to tell. Really? Yeah. That's, that's BuzzFeed shit. Um, three p three percent of people who vote of the one hundred and forty four people who voted in this three percent decided they were angry about this. The other thing is they're not even using the emojis correctly because the laughing one is excited, and the smirking one is amused. Yeah, you don't even know what the emojis mean. <laughs> Sorry, I know I'm sidetracking us, but that's <laughs> appalling. A alleged burglar dubbed Criminal Claws didn't come down the chimney. Uh, 
with a bound when he tried a Santa-like entry into a Northern California business. Citrus Heights police got a 911 call from a man saying he was stuck in the chimney of a business. Turns out Jesse uh, Barube, 32, decided to sneak into the business by sliding down the chimney, but he became lodged. Although he wasn't able to get out, Barube was able to move freely enough to call for help. Officers and firefighters used special equipment to get Barube out of the chimney. Fortunately, he was not hurt. He was arrested for burglary and even had his mugshot tarnished in ashes and soot. No word yeah, of his... that's a good-looking mugshot. No word of his getaway vehicle was pulled by eight reindeer. Aha! Ha! 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 You're not funny. You're not funny. You're not. Elizabeth how, is, is Sal, yeah, you're not funny. How have people not learned that this is a bad idea by now? Every, like, every three or four months we get one of these guys. And every three or four months somebody has to call the fucking police and the fire department. They have to come out there and carve down part of a goddamn chimney because your stupid ass thought if Santa can do it, I can do it. And it's I don't weigh as much. What? It's not going to end like the night before Christmas. It's no. going to end like Edgar Allan Poe's The Black Cat. <laughs> I, I, you know, they're thinking, I don't weigh as much as Santa. Santa is not. Hey, I'm not going to say it because there are kids watching. They shouldn't be. But you know, parents, you're letting your damn kids watch this. Please don't do that. <laughs> you know who you are. This is so not appropriate for children. You let your damn kids watch me. No. My oldest nephew is 19 now, and I'm like, technically, he could watch the show, and I really hope he does it. <laughs> there are conversations I'm not ready to have with those kids. It's... I, I Or their parents. I mean, my God, I have never, and I've, I have never seen one of these situations go down where it was a cunning... It never works. It never works. Ever. You know why? Because the chimney's like this big on the inside. Yeah, it's not designed for human beings to get in it's and not. out of. It's not. Why do you think Santa is a special case? That's like his fucking gig. Okay. Santa goes through a lot of Crisco and pixie dust to do that. Here, get ready to be a little depressed about our our collective history. Um, do you know why chimney street uh, chimney sweeps in England, many of them were small children? Because they could fit. Because they could fit. Because th that's what children were doing to that's for work. They would push them up soot covered chimneys and give them the black lung by the age of six. Or just send them down coal mines. Or coal mines, yeah. Because then they wouldn't have to dig the holes this big. Yeah, you're not a big, you're not, the, the chimneys are not made for you. Don't do this. You're fucking. Okay, it's naked time. Well, Woo! close to naked. Man. What? It's naked time. Okay, if that's what you're going to do on the internet, I'm not going to stop you, but. <laughs> no. no, I mean, you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he didn't sign on for this shit, man. Sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> A foot fetish Instagram asked me to DM them today. And I was like, no. I don't want to be on your obvious foot fetish Instagram. Thank you. So this is probably one of the most Florida things that could have possibly happened in Florida. Near naked man on hood of Jeep screaming in Winn-Dixie parking lot. Okay. He was in his underwear, clutching the hood and screaming atop what he said was his stolen white Jeep as it rolled from a darkened roadway into a grocery store parking lot. She was behind the wheel, swerving wildly and doing donuts in the parking lot of Winn-Dixie. Is this like the next Adam Sandler movie? The couple was at the center of a Monday night ruckus that brought Titusville police and stirred onlookers to curiosity. Wild incident happened about 8 p.m., uh, it was crazy. I was driving to Winn-Dixie, and they were in front of me. He was already on the hood, said Melissa Scott, a witness who called police. She was holding on, and the lady was driving and just hitting the gas. He was yelling, she stole my car, and she's going to kill me. It seems serious. Yeah. 
No arrests were made, but uh, but police said the couple appeared to have been arguing. Did they? <laughs> Be a dispute underway <laughs> fucking Colombo. That's that's some that's some fine police work there. They appeared to be arguing. Witnesses say the man in his early 30s and wearing only underwear was seen straddling the hood of the car and saying the woman stole his Jeep. The woman in her 20s was dressed in a pink shirt with jammy shorts. I love how the story had to Spe be specific about there. Uh, and was seen driving in circles before coming to the stop. She then stepped out of the vehicle, tossed the keys on the ground, and walked off toward a gas station. Police arrived, found the man on the ground, searching for his keys. The man, described as uncooperative, yelled at officers and told officers he did not want to file any complaints. Okay. No arrests. This is just a regular weeknight in Florida. Yeah. This is the shit that just happens. They pr they're probably on their honeymoon. <laughs> I mean, their honeymoon was probably the Winn Dixie. Some places you have to worry about the snow. Some places you have to worry about tornadoes. Some places you have to worry about mosquitoes. And in Florida, you have to worry about half-naked motherfuckers on a Jeep getting driven around and screaming and shit. Yeah. That's just a thing that happens in Florida. And what do you, like, what's the, what's, what's the driving safety rules for that situation? Because if he falls off. He did. Or he's flying into your car. Yeah, you, you did. Bought. Like, what's the defensive driving rules for that? They didn't cover that in my driver's ed. Okay, I, you know what? Florida driver's ed must be amazing. Must be fucking wild. Like, there's got to be a whole naked guy chapter. All right, everybody. It's that day. I don't want to hear any shit. It's naked guy day. Don't we think it can't happen to you, Brad. What happened to you? I have to yield to naked guys entering the roadway. <laughs> okay, what's next? Um, oh, this is this 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 gentleman. This is West Virginia, but this guy. All of the fuck this guy. All of I, I want you to find I want you to find all of the fuck this guy. Because we're gonna need it. Jealous, my fuck this guy. jealous boyfriend charged with starting fire at Huntington Strip Club. Investigators say a jealous boyfriend tried to start a fire at a strip club early Wednesday morning, all because he didn't want his girlfriend working there anymore. He was caught, caught in part because from across the street, he allegedly yelled to a witness to leave it alone and mind his own business. Mm -hmm. List of damage at JB Gentleman's Club along US 60 is long. Burned AC unit, burn wall, sighting damage, damage camera, missing neon sign, damage front door. Um, new door is already in place. The old one's behind a dumpster. Uh Deputy say the man is 21-year-old Creo Bishop, boyfriend of one of the JB's dancers. I, I, it's oh wait according to the manager this motherfucker doesn't even have a job she's supporting his ass yes that was the next part he doesn't have a job their sole means of support is her working at the strip club he doesn't want her working there anymore so he tries to burn the strip and let's have a look at this fella because this this he's yeah there this he is haircut is from 2004 yes it is I think that was like Bieber's haircut when he was 16. Move on. Yeah, that th there he is. Um, Your fucking girlfriend's supporting you and you don't like how? Get yeah. a fucking job! All right, there are two things that happened here. Either, while y'all was dating, she decided this was a good option for her. In which case, you had the choice of stay together or leave. Or... You started dating her while she was already da dancing at the club, in which case, 
You don't get to say shit. You don't get to say shit. Either way, you don't, and you especially don't get to say shit when the woman is feeding your ass. Like, I don't get to complain about Dan's Craigslist side hustle because it allows me to volunteer at cat shelter. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that I just have to be cool with that. Even I'm, when he comes home with fleas, like it's just it is what it is. You gotta you gotta deal with it. I, I love the nights that I'm not totally paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I only catch like little bits when my name is mentioned. I love you. I love you too. I just you, you mother and you try to burn the place down. That's your solution. That's not, your solution. Not we need to split up. Not, or maybe getting a fucking job. Or that. Your your solution is to burn down the strip club. So now, not only do you not have a job, you are and here you are in jail. And here's the this is the part that really pissed me off. Everyone here sucks. Listen to this. Reed said if uh Bishop gets out of jail, he can't afford to keep her as a dancer. I hate to do it, but I gotta protect my business. He might do this again. It might be worse next time. So he cost her her job. Fuck this guy. Fuck you. You know she dumps your ass so hard. Yes. Dump him. Go do whatever you want with your life within, you know, legal adult shit. Do whatever you want. You are a full grown person. And don't, don't, don't go this, fuck this guy. Not earning uh, any money, motherfucker. Setting shit on fire. And you know what? The total amount of damage he did? A thousand dollars. So he sucks at trying to burn a place down. <laughs> You're not even good at arson. You're not even good at arson. That's like the easiest crime. Seriously. Peggy could commit arson. Peggy, the, the cat could commit arson. I think she's tried a few times. Lady, you can do better. Go and do better. In fact, you don't... can do so much better. Go get a job at the really classy strip club in town. Yes. Like, not the shitty one with the handmade sign. Go get a job at the really fucking good one where the fucking bankers go. Yeah, and, and, and get yourself a better salary and a better man. And don't pay his bail. Just leave his oh, ass. No. Don't pay his fucking bail. You let him sit there. <sighs> well, we got this one. I just, oh my God, this last story. Wowzers. This this guy went brace yourselves. I can't even I, I keep stumbling and trying to describe what all the fuck happened here because this one is nutso. Naked man jumps onto moving truck near Dulles. I saw this video. Wow. Amid strong winds and temperatures in the 20s. It was really fucking cold that day. So, you know, don't judge what you see. A man stripped naked and jumped onto a moving truck in freezing temperatures Tuesday near Washington Dulles International Airport. Truck drivers stopped their cars to gawk at the man's rampage. There's the word. Have you noticed how many of these stories, if you, you call ding, it, ding, 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 ding. they call it, it's not, we didn't come up with calling it a naked rampage. Mm. The media came up with naked rampage. It wasn't in the AP style book when I studied journalism, but apparently they've added it since then. Jose, if they're naked, it's a rampage. <laughs> Jose Gonzalez Flores, 32, was involved in a hit and run and then assaulted another driver and ran into traffic. Tried to smash the windows of passing cars and used a knife to stab at the roof of the truck he jumped onto. Well, your first mistake is trucks don't bleed. <gasps> Wait. No, no. Yeah, the puppy. The puppy. Puppy's okay, everybody. I'll, uh, but yeah, a tra the driver of a tractor trailer said Flores tried to whip him out of his vehicle and then punched out a window raining glass onto his dog. German hu Shepherd Husky mix named Emma. The glass cut the dog's face. She's fuck okay. You. Yeah, fuck this guy, but the dog's okay. You heard a dog, motherfucker. Puppy's okay. Um, she didn't ask for this. 
And here, just so you guys see, here's here he is, naked and trying to stab a truck. He's probably lucky his junk didn't stick to that truck. Like, he's really lucky there was no moisture there. We've all seen a Christmas story. <laughs> he shouted, hi -ya, as if he were... But you know what? He heard a dog, so I wish that had happened. He deserves it. He shouted hi -ya, as if he were doing karate as he broke the window. Um, it was got up to 30 miles an hour before he finally let go. Um, Tariq Hussain said the whole scene, he saw the whole scene unfold after his uh, dump truck was hit from behind by a blue pickup truck. He said the naked man lay down the road and tried to damage multiple cars. The guy was actually stopping cars. He was laying down. He started swinging, laying down naked and all that stuff. So people stopped. They didn't want to run him over. They just stopped. And whoever stopped, he goes to them and try to smash their window. He like jumped in this guy's pickup truck flatbed and tried to stab it with a knife. Uh, fully nude, he jumped off the truck and ran into a wooded area. He put a tire around his neck and ran into the woods. Tires are really heavy. Flores was found a short time later in a drainage ditch on airport property. He was arrested, taken to a hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. No one else was hurt. What the fuck? What? They, they, cannot, they cannot determine if he was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Just one day, this dude takes off all his clothes, grabs a knife, and starts trying to ambush cars going Can down the... Sing? Car window glass? Pretty fucking resilient. Yeah, it is. Like, like, they make a special tool to escape your car if you get trapped in your car. Yeah. I used to have one. I don't anymore. But it had, like, a special blade to cut through your seatbelt, because those are really hard. Like, a regular knife won't do it. And a special hammer to break the glass, because car window glass is usually shatterproof. Well... Not the kind of shit you can just punch through with your hand. Fuck, when I went to Ireland when I was 13, which is what, 1990? We got our keys locked in, locked in a car, locked in the car up at the top of the hill of Slane because my mom wanted to see the ruins where St. Patrick had walked. And we were up there for three hours trying to break into that fucking car because we couldn't break the window. It's not uh, like, like just. I could have broke that window though. I could have broke that. We had a rock window. this big. Like the farmers who lived up there were trying. Like it was a whole thing. <laughs> All because my mom, like my sister and I, didn't want to get out of the car, and she like came and yelled at us, and we're like, "St. Patrick walked on this ground. You have to get out of the car." Didn't tell us she left keys in it. This so just, you know, one day all of a sudden you're trying to drive to work. It's a cold ass day. It sucks already. You're in DC. And the fucking naked Hulk is out punching windows out. There's just a Pretty naked innocent dogs. There's a naked motherfucker running up and down the highway with his dick out and a knife trying to what it, they're not mastodons for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's a truck. Your knife isn't even going to annoy it. It doesn't care. It's a truck. But he heard a dog. He did. Well, the I'm dog, really mad about that. The dog will be okay. That's the good news. The puppy, yeah. puppy's going to be okay. But just, and then decided, I'm done with this. I will wear a tire and run into the woods. Good day, sir. That's not clothes. Lord of the Fly sequels fucked up. <laughs> Tires are not clothing. No. Tires are not... But I'm saying, think about how fucking strong, what kind of ber berserker strength this guy was rocking. Punching the windows out of cars, putting a tire around his neck and then running off. With you his know, dick out. The whole you know time. How much car tire weighs? A lot. Like about A lot. Like 20, I don't know exactly pounds. how much, but I can't fucking lift one. Without the, the metal insert, probably like 20 pounds, 20, 30 pounds. The metal insert, well, he couldn't put the tire around his neck that had the metal still part of it, but. But, like, what kind of fucking berserker strength was going on here? 
I is, that is, that is just why I. This is a bad. How does anybody get to that point? There, there is a whole. I mean, we we're here in media res. There's a whole prologue we're missing. Yeah. There's we we came in on the second reel here. Unless this is part two of the underwear guy whose girlfriend stole his jeep. He got all the way from Florida to Washington. Unless he's just been working his way up the coast. And uh, lost his undies somewhere along the way. I guess that's the first thing we learned this week. Tires aren't clothes. No. Tires. Tires aren't clothes. Um, we learned this week that, uh, ladies... If your significant other has a problem with your chosen profession, either discuss it like rational adults or bye, goodbye. Because mm -hmm. otherwise... If he tries to burn down your job? Don't pay his bail. Mm -mm. Don't pay his bail. That's... Let that motherfucker rot. We've learned if you live in Florida, naked crazy shit, it's just a way of life. You'll have to accept. Drive, drive to Zed is a lot harder. It's like how people in, in in Canada apologize a lot. People in Florida are running around naked a lot. Yeah. It's it's just their culture, I guess. <laughs> it's just their culture. Yeah. We've learned stay the fuck out of chimneys. Yeah, please. It's so not safe. And not only that, every time some dumb motherfucker does this shit, their how their ins the people whose property's on their insurance goes up because the fucking fire department had to carve a hole in the goddamn chimney. And also, the fucking fire department had to waste an hour of their time on your sorry ass because you did a thing that was fucking stupid. We've learned if it's illegal in real life, it's still illegal on the internet. Yep. <clears throat> Just because you made the jail porn for the internet does not mean... And not... just because one of the parties is already in prison doesn't mean you won't go. Yeah, you'll go. And finally, we've learned, hey, it's 2017. We can still, as a, as, as a society, as a humanity, as, as a species, we can still invent new crime. We're still innovators. <laughs> We're not done yet! 